Hello everyone, welcome back to SFDC Ninja and today I am back with another trigger interview scenario. So without any delay, let's get started. Now let's set the foundation by understanding data model for today's scenario. So in today's scenario, we are going to use three objects, account, case and task. Between account and case object, account is the parent object and case is the child object. And between case object and task object, case is the parent object and task is the child. Also, from account object, we are going to use description field. From case object, we are going to use a status field, which is of pick list type, and it contains different values like new, working, escalated, and many more. Similarly, from task object, we are going to use status field, which also contains different values, but the thing is, it also contains all the values present in case status field. So, this is all about data model. Now let's go to today's scenario and understand what exactly we are going to do today. So in today's scenario, we have to update account description and task status whenever case status field gets updated. Confused? But don't worry, I will try to explain it more clearly by using a flowchart. Let's say there is a user and he updates case status value. Now after its updation, we have to perform two actions. First, we need to populate case number and status of case which is recently updated in description of parent account. And second, we need to update status value of related task with the same value of case status. So this is what we need to do today. Guys, I think we have been discussing theoretical part for quite a long time. It's time to code. So let's switch to VS Code and create our handler class. Let's name it TRG handler. Let's create our method public static void trg method now guys look we have to perform all of our tasks after updation of case status so it is case object which will invoke a trigger therefore what we will do to kick start our logic we will pass list of case record as parameter in our method like this list of case let's say new case list and in this list we will pass trigger.new from our trigger. Therefore, this list will have newly update case record. Apply a null check on this list. Note is empty. Iterate over it. Work case. New case. New case list. Now see, we need that our further code should execute only when a user change the case status value but here the question is how we will get to know that okay now case status value has been updated so the answer to this question is very simple by checking old and new value of case status field and to fetch old value we will pass another parameter in our method like this map id case let's say old case map and in this parameter we will pass trigger dot old map from our trigger apply a null check on this map if old case map dot is empty and create an instance of case using this map case let's say old case old case map dot get new case dot id and this old case will be used to compare old value and new value of case status like this if old case dot status not equals to new case dot status now if this condition will get true which means if case status field has been updated then what we will do we will store case id and its status in a map so let's create a map like this map id comma string let's say case status map id comma string copy its name paste it here and we will store id of case in key of map and status in value new case dot id new case dot status so this map will be used to update task status but we also have to update account that's why we'll be needing account id of the case which is being updated. So for that, let's create a set first. Set ID, CC IDs, new set ID. And in this set, we will store parent account ID. Also, inside this if condition, 
add another condition new case dot account id not equals to null and store account id in our set copy our set name paste it here dot add new case dot account id now our next step is to update related task status but before that we will apply a null check on this map like this if not this is status map dot is empty so that our further code will be executed only if this map contains a value and this map contains value when user updates case status field now let's fetch list of related tasks using token like this task tsk list select id status what id from task where what id in dot key set apply a null check on this list if not tsk list dot is empty and iterate over it for task tsk tsk list now we need to update task status by case status for that let's create a string variable to store case status and we have case status in value of this map so let's declare a string variable like this apply a check that if this map contains what id of task if case status map dot contains the tsk dot that id and if it contains then simply fetch value of map which is case status using what id of task and store it in this variable like this case status case status map dot get tsk dot what id so we have case status in this variable let's update task status using this variable case status now to bulkify our code we will not perform dml inside for loop for that let's create a list of tasks here like this let's say tasks to update new list task copy this list name and add task record in it tsk apply another check on this list if dot is empty and finally update it so our first task has been completed now let's come to second task which is updating accounts description for that first apply a null check on this set which contains parent account id if not sec id is dot is empty now in next step we will fetch account data in a map like this id account let's say account map new map id comma account select id comma description from account where id in this set guys see we need to populate case number and status of recently updated case in accounts description and we have already fetched description field here now we need case number and status of updated case so for this what we will do we will fetch case data using account id present in this set like this for case let's say cs select account id case number comma status from case where account id in our set and status not equals to null and now to make our code more efficient we will store this case and its account id in a map so let's create a map first like this map id comma case latest case map id comma case copy this map name and store data in it 
dot put cs dot account id comma cs let's also apply a check like this if this map not contains key cs dot account id then only it will store data so this map will be used to check corresponding account id of case which is being updated and also to use case number and status of the case which is presenting value of this map now it's time to update accounts description so let's iterate over values of this map here for account account map dot values and apply a check that if this latest case map contains id of this account like this if latest case map dot contains key acc dot id and if it contains then what we will do we will first create an instance of case record using this map like this case latest case latest case map dot get acc dot id so i created this instance to make code easy to understand and now finally put values in description acc dot description let's say latest case status for case latest case dot case number plus is latest case dot status create a list to update accounts list count let's say accounts to update copy this list name add this account in this list dot add acc apply a null check is empty and finally update it so our both task has been completed now let's take a look to understand what we did in this code till now so whenever a case gets updated we are storing its id and status in a map and this map will be used to update task record let's see how we are fetching list of tasks using id presenting key of this map which is id of case and after that we are updating task status by value of map in which case status is present so this is our first task our next task is to update account description so for that whenever a case record gets updated we are also storing its parent account id in a set and here using this set we are fetching account data also to make our code more efficient we are storing case record and account id in a map which will be used to get case number and status of recently updated case and finally using this map here we are updating accounts description so this is all about our handler class code save it and deploy it to org okay we are getting an error 31 okay i forgot to use brackets again deploy it it is successfully deployed so we have our handler class ready now let's create our trigger let's name it case trg a trigger will be on case object with after event after event because we are updating fields of related records so let's write case here with after update apply a check like this is after trigger dot is update so that our handler class will run only on update operation and let's call our handler class method trg handler dot trg method pass trigger dot new in first parameter and trigger dot old map in second save it and deploy it to org it is successfully deployed so we have our code ready it's time to test our code so let's go to our org in our org we have this account and this account has a case on it let's open it let's create a task on it 
status is not started. Now let's update the status of this case to escalated. Save it. Let's check our first task, which is to update related task status. Let's check it. Since the status of this task is escalated, it means our code is working fine for task object. Now let's go to account. Refresh it. Let's check its description. See, it is also showing correct value, which means our trigger is working fine for both objects. So that's it for today guys and I'll be back with more advanced trigger scenarios. Thank you.